Alright guys, welcome back to Ranger Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew, and we're just going to jump right into these 10 minimalist bushcraft fire survival skills. Maybe things you haven't thought of before. And our first skill is going to be with horse hoof fungus and our survival saw. Traditionally, there are a lot of different funguses that grow on trees that can be processed down to create tinder, things like chaga, amadou. But we can take this horse of fungus with our saw and simply saw into it, collecting that fine powder on a flat surface to create enough tinder to actually get a fire going. Once we've collected that material, we move out to the sun's rays and we can use any ignition source, but today we're gonna to use our Fresnel or Fresno lens to actually ignite this material and show you how easily it actually lights and stays lit. We focus the sun's rays on that tinder. It will begin smoking almost immediately. We can pull our solar lens away after just a few seconds and that dust will continue to burn and the ember will grow long enough for us to get everything collected and come back and then finally take that ember, transfer it into our bird's nest or tinder bundle, and then it's just business as usual after this. We just start adding oxygen, and thankfully it's a windy day, so that wind will work for us, increasing the ember size and eventually blowing that tinder bundle into flame, and now we have our survival fire good to go. Now for our next fire skill, we're gonna need to harvest a green sapling or underbrush from the area. There's a lot of underbrush out here, and this technique that we're going to use is great for flooded areas that don't have a lot of tinder sources available or everything's green, everything's wet. We can actually take this technique, and if we have the time and resources, and especially the sunlight available, we can apply this technique to create tinder for us to actually get a fire going. We we'll grab that green sapling with our parang and then come back to camp. We're going to lay down our shemag and then use that as a collector for the bark itself. We're going to take that 90 degree spine from the back of our paranga. We're just going to go down the body of that sapling and scrape off that initial layer of bark. It comes off very easily and we've done this before with arrowwood. But we can harvest that bark. It comes off in fine ribbons and shavings. And then once we have that harvested in a nice clump, we can collect it up with our shemag. And we're going to move out to the sunlight where there's a good breeze and fresh full sunlight. We're going to lay that shemag out. We're going to lay our bark out to make sure that it's spread out. There's a lot of air reaching it, and it, the sun is fully exposed to that bark. And we're going to let it sit, and we can let it sit for as long as we want, but typically it dries within 30 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes. So if we have enough time, we can actually create this tinder, let it sit, and then come back later once we have our fire materials collected. Once that tinder is dry, then we collect it up. We can process it a little bit, and then using it, an ignition source like our lighter, we can light that tinder material. It will stay lit and actually take a flame very easily in about one to two seconds and then slowly burn and it gives us a longer lasting flame for fire lighting. Now we've all seen fatwood shavings and using fatwood to start a fire. However, sometimes we don't have a collector or something to actually concentrate those fatwood shavings in. We can either take off our shirt or we can use our hat, but there is another method improvisation that we can use with fatwood to collect up those shavings but then use it to actually create a longer lasting tinder source or flame to get a fire started and that's simply using duct tape. Once we have our fatwood and we use the back of our knife, that 90 degree spine, to make shavings, we can then take our tape from our pencil because we put it there for some reason and then take out a strip of tape roll it reverse side out so the sticky side is out into a simple log shape or a tube shape and once we have that all we have to do is start collecting the dust with the sticky side out even if it's all over the ground in our fire pit we should be able to get enough then we take our ferro rod we ignite that fat wood shavings and then it will actually burn and ignite the tape for us giving us a longer lasting tinder source Now for this fourth technique, we're going to take out our sniper veil, we could use a shemag, but we're going to do up just a quick improvised sling to immobilize a limb, in this case our arm, to demonstrate a one-handed or injured one-handed ferro rod strike using the 90 degree spine of our knife and our ferro rod to get tinder going in an emergency because sometimes we may have an injured limb and we may need to improvise with the skills we have available. But with this, we can take out a platform, just a piece of wood, and then put that piece of wood down on the ground. We can take out our blade or our parang, and we're going to lay that down on top of the platform with the blade away from us, obviously, and then a 90 degree spine exposed. And we want to step up on the platform with our foot right in the middle, 
on top of the knife so we're not actually applying pressure to that blade. And then we just take out our ferro rod, hit the 90 degree spine of our knife, and we can shoot sparks down to ignite tinder, in this case the Mini Inferno from Pathfinder, to get an emergency fire going with one hand. For our fifth skill, we're going to make a specific type of fire lay. Now we have our fire pit dug out, but the first thing we need to do is create a platform to set our fire material on, that way we can protect our fire, obviously. And then we grab just a bunch of smalls from the area, dead dry material, and begin to create that loose TP structure on top of our platform. We grab some of our tinder from the area, we're going to place that underneath to act as a fire starter, but then as a support mechanism for the TP itself. And then once we're satisfied with the size of our TP, we're going to grab three sticks to form an A-frame over top of this TP structure, thus the A-frame fire lay. And once we have that A-frame set up where we want it, all we have to do now is just grab additional material and stack it up around that A-frame and over top of our TP fire lay as we would do with an A-frame type shelter. And we just continue stacking that material up and up until we're satisfied with that material. We can add as much as we want. The point of this fire lay is to point it mouth open toward the wind. We have a southeast to northwest breeze today and gusts up to 18 miles an hour out here in the prairies. And so this fire is great to take advantage of the wind. Once we're ready, we have that fire lay set up. We can just light our material and then that flame will burn and the wind will do the rest of the work for us, feeding that flame, blowing it into our fire material set up on the A-frame, using that TP to get the initial fire started, and then burning everything around the A-frame for a survival fire, either for signaling or purifying water and producing a lot of heat very quickly. For skill number six, we're gonna make char cloth, only this time we're gonna use an open container to actually make that char cloth. They're Several different ways we can make char material, but today we're going to use just items from our basic survival kit. In this case, a canteen cup, a rock we found, and then a shemag that's just been dying to be cut up and turned into char cloth. Once we have all our material, we can just grab our knife, cut up that shemag into strips, fold it up, and then place it inside of our canteen cup. And then we're going to take our rock, put it on top of that material just to make sure it fits, and then we are ready to go. We can move to our fire pit where the fire is burned now, now to coals. We're going to take our fire stick and we just need to sweep those embers away to create a clear open area still where the ground is hot. Because it's uneven in our fire pit, we're going to use that stick to dig out a flat surface area right in the middle of our fire pit where our canteen cup and our char material is going to go. Once we're satisfied with that area, we move in there and we just flip the canteen with shemag and rock inside and place it right down, mouth down on that spot we just dug out. So now the rock is sitting on the ground, the shemag is on top of the rock inside an enclosed container, our canteen cup. And then from there, all we have to do is sweep the coals back over top of our canteen cup, and then make sure there's no oxygen getting in around the mouth of the cup. And then we just build the fire up over top of our canteen cup and let it burn. The beauty of this is that we can't overchar anything, so we can leave it as long as we want and continue to burn or char that material inside of our canteen cup for as long as we want. Once we're satisfied and the fire is burned down, we test the cup with our hand, the back of our hand to make it safe. If we can handle it with our hands, even though it's still warm, it's at a low enough temperature to where we're going to have char in there and it will not ignite if we expose it to oxygen. We pull out the cup, remove the rock, dump out our char material and we are lucky enough to have char material from that shemag that we can use for future fire lighting. For skill number seven we need to test our char and then we're actually going to use it out in the field like we would if we brought this for a primary tinder source. We take a piece of that char with our ferro and our knife to simply strike it one strike and it is lit so we know this is proven char and it produces a very good quality char cloth material for tinder out in the field. But with this fine material, because it is so fine, just like me, we can use flint and steel with the char material to actually get a fire going like we would out in the field. Luckily our parang is 100% carbon steel. We can use that with a hard rock holding that tinder source in place on our stump. And this is how we would use it out in the field, simply striking sparks off the back of our parang until that tinder is lit or the char cloth is lit. Then we just transfer that to our tinder bundle and take advantage of the wind again to blow that tinder bundle into flame to give us our survival fire starting source to apply to our material and get our fire going out in the field. Good to go.
Now for skill number eight, we're going to double up and demonstrate some alternate methods for striking and scraping out in the field. Great if we're injured or if we are exhausted or lack the upper body strength or mobility, flexibility, and dexterity to actually accomplish these skills for whatever reason. But we take our knife, we're going to baton it into an anvil or a stump and then practice scraping with our ferro rod to make sure we can shoot some sparks. We're going to grab tinder source, put it on the blade on the opposite side away from us and then simply strike over top of that 90 degree edge with our ferro to ignite that tinder material and then put it into our fire lay to get a fire going. And then that other technique we can even use larger blades and tools as long as we have that 90 degree edge this time we can actually scrape tinder material as well as the ferro rod to get that tinder material lit for our survival fire. We baton that parang into the anvil and then we take our piece of fat wood and then just use that 90 degree edge to begin scraping fine material on the front side of our blade. Once we have enough material set up and the wind hasn't blown it away this time, we take our ferro rod, simply strike over top of that to get that fat wood lit, apply it to our fire lay, and now we have our survival fire. For skill number nine, we're gonna do a hasty bow drill set. This is great for individuals under a time crunch maybe, or if we want to safeguard our material and expend less effort and energy up front, therefore we can focus more on the production of the ember on the back end of this set. We simply leave the top of our hearth board rounded when we're ready to actually produce fire. We cut in with a saw about an inch or two away from the end, a couple of centimeters in, and then baton that section out or that square, and then carve our divot. From there we can go to the ground and then actually burn in with our set. We just set up all our pieces, business as usual with any friction fire set or the bow drill, and then we burn in until the burn in is approximately the same diameter as our spindle. And then once we have that set, we can go ahead and move on to our next step, which is gonna be carving the notch. Once we're ready to carve in our notch and we're satisfied with that burning, we're just going to go back to the stump this time, use our survival saw or a folding saw to actually carve out that notch. We can go back to ground now. We're going to use that parang because it's nice and wide as a makeshift catch for our bow drill set. And then we just set up all the pieces, business as usual with the bow drill set. And once we're ready, step up on that hearth board, set in the spindle or the drill in place, holding everything together with our bearing block. And then we just spin and drill. As we get more smoke from the material, we can drill harder and faster. And once the notch is full, that is when we go for broke, applying downward pressure and as much speed as possible to build that ember up. And once the notch starts spitting out that ember and it starts smoking by itself, we can stop, let up, and actually inspect. Once we have an ember, we just tap it free from the board and then we can apply it to our tinder bundle. And once again, using the high winds today, blow it into flame and we have our fire. The beauty of the Hasty Bow Drill Friction Fire Set is that all we have to do is go back to the anvil if we need to do another friction fire, cut in with our saw, baton that material away, carve our divot, and then go back to ground, do our another burn in, go back to the anvil, use our saw to carve that notch, and then we're right back at it very quickly to produce another ember to apply to another tinder bundle to get another fire going. So we can take this set with us, travel with it, use it very quickly, protect the material, and it's very little effort and energy up front to actually get that fire for survival. Now for skill number 10, our last skill, everybody has seen batoning into material to get to the dry stuff inside. We take a baton, hit the back of our knife to split that material, and you're either for batoning or you're against batoning. Either way, we can take this skill and flip it on its head to actually produce a safer way to baton material, protecting our knife, but also protecting us in case we're tired, sleep deprived, or we've been out in the field for a long time and we want to safeguard our tools. We take our knife and we just pound it into our anvil and then we take our material, set it up against our blade, holding the handle of our blade and giving us two points of contact on the knife. We hit the back of the wood this time with our baton, splitting that material. And we can continue doing this to smaller and smaller pieces, giving us tinder, giving us kindling, and then finally fuel material to build up our fire. Again, this is a great technique for individuals out in the field who are tired, sleep deprived, or who lack upper body strength or dexterity or physical control of the knife and the baton to give you a little bit safer way to process material down, make it a lot easier and a lot faster while being safe at the same time.
All right, guys, that does it for this video. 10 minimalist bushcraft fire survival skills. I hope you liked this video. If you did like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment in the comment section. I always appreciate your feedback. I want to thank you guys for thinking you do for me, for this channel, for your likes, your views, your subscriptions, your comments, your feedback, and your shares. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.